Jessica Smith's father was an alcoholic. Her mother raised her to believe in Jesus, and Jessica often turned to God for comfort and security. I loved the idea that God was my father in heaven, and he fulfilled any of the inadequacies of my real father. In high school, Jessica decided to do what felt good to her, including experimenting with drugs. I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to feel cool. I wanted to be popular. I wanted boys to like me. Later, when she went to college, Jessica decided to leave Christianity behind completely. I just saw people living these lives that seemed goody two-shoes to me. It just pushed me the other direction. I just thought, if that's what a Christian is, I don't want it. But spiritual issues were something Jessica couldn't avoid dealing with when a close friend was killed in a motorcycle accident. I had to know, where is she? Is there such a thing as heaven and hell? What do I believe? I didn't know if she knew Jesus, and I couldn't stand the thought of her being in a place called hell. Jessica desperately wanted answers. She didn't like what the Bible said about hell, so she felt compelled to call a relative for advice. The relative, a psychic, told Jessica she could talk to her deceased friend. Jessica knew the Bible warned against talking to mediums, but she was swayed by the emotional experience. It felt like love. It felt like peace. I'd been searching for answers, and I was just in such a state of turmoil, and I'm praying what is truth, and then I am overwhelmed by this sensation of love and peace, and I knew that God was love. And I thought, well, it has to be God then. For the next 10 years, Jessica pursued that feeling full time. She immersed herself in meditation, taught yoga, Reiki energy healing, and communication with spirits. Seeking spiritual truth and escalating along the spiritual path. Um, I viewed all religions and all modes of spirituality as going up paths to the mountain, all different paths to the top of the mountain. And getting to the top of that mountain was absolutely my top priority in life. But the closer Jessica felt to achieving Nirvana, the more her personal life with her boyfriend fell apart. She struggled with anger and unhappiness. I didn't think any of the tumultuousness of our relationship was spiritual. I just needed to see a real counselor and get to the root of the issue, which I viewed as my childhood. You know, this is where this anger is coming from. So she agreed to meet with Christian counselors Donald and Don Offerman as long as they didn't pressure her about Jesus. Over dinner, Jessica and her boyfriend learned of the Offerman's ministry to the homeless in Alaska. I started thinking, well, that's really cool. Here are some people who are working with Jesus the same way I'm working with Buddha and Tara and um, these other energies um, to do good. Jessica decided since Jesus was there for her during childhood, she should give him spiritual priority. All of these other spirits really were just acquaintance spirits compared to that deep foundational relationship that I had with Jesus as a child. And I just thought, why am I not working with Jesus? And then I prayed something that I had no idea how profound it was or what I was setting into motion with my prayer. I prayed to all of the other spirits that I've been working with. I said, thank you so much for all that you have taught me. But from now on, I'm just going to be working with Jesus. And I'd done that before with I'd worked with a certain spirit or energy for a while. There had never been any problems when I transitioned from working with one to another. And so I just thought, of course, there would be no problems. They're all beings of light after all. They just want what's best for me. Jessica and her boyfriend, who had recently become a Christian, began reading the book of Luke aloud every day. Neither of them was prepared for what happened next. I was sitting at the kitchen table, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I mean absolute nowhere, I felt just this overwhelming terror. 
and hate and evil just like overwhelm me in an instant out of nowhere. And I knew something very real was happening spiritually. In that moment, I completely surrendered. And I knew that the only way to be saved from what I had allowed into myself was through Jesus. Jessica asked her boyfriend to pray in the name of Jesus. And the Lord brought to mind verses that I hadn't thought of in a really long time. Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light, and I knew it. I knew in an instant that every single word of the Bible was true, not just the ones that suited the way I wanted to live, all of it. And in an instant, I knew what it was, and it just started coming up and out, and I just consciously let it. And this deep throaty, like, hiss came from the back of my throat. And I felt an energy leave. Jessica rededicated her life to Jesus Christ that night and was set free from many demonic spirits. The Lord knew what needed to happen and he allowed it to happen. He prepared me with his truths of his scriptures and then he removed the veil and let me experience the reality of what I had allowed into myself through these practices. Jessica returned to church where she grew in Christ she met and married Stuart, and they have two sons. She says that the truth she was searching for can only be found in one place. The peace that Jesus gave me was this deep, true peace. It wasn't a feeling. It came by faith. And that's what I really had to realize is that my relationship with Jesus isn't about a feeling. It's about truth. It's about faith, even when it's not comfortable. It's about trusting Him that He is God and I'm not, and that He knows and submitting to that. And then I could look back throughout all the years and all of the choices that I made, and I just saw His patience and how his hand was always protecting me. And he never gave up on me.